What's up in War Eagle War Report family? You got I Jones back with another morning drop. And today we are talking NFL Combine. And let's look at how the Auburn players performed during the Combine. Y'all know how we do right here, War Report style. Let's drop it on them. You are you now, are now listening, listening to, to the War the Report. War Report. Morning drop. It is Monday, March the 4th, and we are in here talking a little NFL combine. Hopefully everybody is doing all right. You got Ike Jones talking a little Auburn football, but uh, next level. So there are quite a few Auburn football players that have taken the leap to go pro. And uh, a couple of them got invites to the combine. And we'll talk about how each of them performed before we get too far in the conversation. You guys need to be helping me out by doing the necessary. If you don't mind, please go ahead and share this video out there on social media. If you're listening on podcasts and you can definitely share that content as well. And, uh, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all those things. But uh, let's get into the conversation, man. The NFL Combine, again, just happened this past weekend. And uh, there were five invitees from Auburn University. Uh, Marcus Harris, Nehemiah Pritchett, DJ James, Jalen Simpson, and Justin Rogers all had an opportunity to perform there. And uh, each of them did fairly well. Uh, some of them did better than others. Uh, but let's just kind of take a look at what the performances were for each of those guys. Um, first and foremost, uh, you know, we'll just kind of pull up all of them here, actually. Uh, and you see here the 40-yard dash uh, statistics or the, the measurables for each of those. 40-yard dash, uh, Marcus Harris ran a 5.06. The number there in parenthesis is how they ranked for their position group. So amongst the defensive tackles that ran the 40-yard dash, Marcus Harris was the 12th fastest. Uh, Nehemiah Pritchett was the fourth fastest cornerback at 4.3. Uh, Six DJ James at a four four two was the ninth fastest cornerback. Jalen Simpson ran a four four five. He was the third fastest safety, and Justin Rogers did not do the forty yard dash. So yeah, anything that's blank there, you see um, the person did not participate. As far as vertical leap, uh, twenty nine point five for Marcus Harris, thirty four point five for Nehemiah Pritchett, thirty nine point five for Jalen Simpson. Justin Rogers came in at a 24.5 vertical leap. DJ James did not participate in this. Apparently, DJ James went there and, and ran to 40 and, uh, you know, did the drills and was like, I'm done. Because <laughs> that's the only thing he has any recorded measurables for. Uh, as far as performances, though, Jalen Simpson was the third best vertical leap. Uh, as you can see, Jalen Simpson across the board, his measurables, he was third, third, and second in the things that he did. That's the 40-yard dash, the vertical, and the broad jump. Um, as far as broad jump is concerned, Marcus Harris, 8.7-inch uh, broad jump, coming in 18th there, and Justin Rogers just behind him at 8.3 uh, for his broad jump at 19th. Justin Rogers was the only one that competed in the shuttles or, or participated in the shuttle. He did 4.87. That was good for ninth amongst the defensive linemen. Um, or defensive tackles, I should say, so interior defensive linemen, not defensive ends. And then on the bench press, it was just the two D tackles, which Marcus Harris did 27, was good for sixth. And then Justin Rogers did 21, which was good for 10th amongst that position group. So good performances there amongst all of the Auburn players. I don't think anybody went there and necessarily disappointed um, or performed lower than any expectations that anyone might have had. I do think, though, that uh, it's interesting to kind of take a look at what they decided to perform and do uh, versus the things that they did not. And I am going to be interested to see how these numbers compare to what happens when uh, Auburn has its pro day and whether or not guys are able to um, improve upon any of these numbers uh, in the time that they have between now and then. Uh, but I really want to kind of focus in on the guys who I think um, – did themselves favor. So as far as their stock in this NFL draft, uh, I think there are some guys that came in here and they really impressed and allowed themselves to have a bigger stock. Now, of course, you know, your boy Ike Jones, I I'm, I'm going to toot my own horn here. I said, we're going to go to the NFL combine and Jalen Simpson's going to throw up some absurd number and it's going to make people like really go, wow, I didn't realize he was that athletic. And I think that he went out there and did that. Now, I thought he was going to run faster than 4.45. Uh, but, you know, I, I figured that he was going to have a good vertical leap. I figured he was going to have a good broad jump just because he's a, he's a good athlete. And then you see the, um, you know, he's become viral for the backwards flip that he hits 
because it was so ridiculous. Like the athleticism, like he kind of just laid out into the backwards flip. It was like a slow um, backwards flip turn, like full body late. Like it was crazy. Um, and, and he stuck it, stuck the ending of it, and everybody's like hype around him. And then everybody starts back flipping like the rest of the time. Like it's, it, you know, it's kind of starting. I'm not saying he's the first person to ever backflip at the combine. It's just not true. Um, but I think it became like a thing that people started doing later um, after his clip went viral. But yeah, man, Jalen Simpson's just a different kind of athlete, man. He's a guy who's going to be out there and he is going to turn people's heads because of his athleticism. Um, you know, and, you know, I looked at some of the stuff and that, that, you know, the NFL network and the, um, they, they have the website. If you guys haven't seen, they have the NFL.com has their prospects and they do breakdowns on like total scores for each of the guys and they give a prospect grade. Uh, and so I'll go through all the prospect grades. I'm going to purposefully do Jalen Simpson's last, um, just because I do want to hearken on him. Actually, I want to talk about the, the, the cornerbacks, uh, a little bit. So I'll start with Marcus Harris. Uh, when we do this and and just kind of get into what they said about him. Um, overall, Marcus Harris prospect grade was a 6.19 and how that rates on their scale is they say anyone in that range is going to be a good backup with potential to develop into a starter. So he, he's a guy right now who looks like a rotational piece to them. Uh, he came in at 6'2", 289. Uh, with 32 inch arms and nine point uh, nine inches and point nine point five eight or nine and five eighths inches uh, for his hand measures, uh, which again that's pretty good. He is undersized for a defensive tackle, and they talk about that in his profile, saying that you know he makes up for it with his quickness and uh, you know, but he can potentially get pushed around the next level. You know, and I think you know maybe those things are fair if you're just looking at his measurables. But if you go watch his tape, you you know that. You know, he doesn't get pushed around very much up there. I think the the bigger thing for him is just guessing wrong sometimes because he is going to have to utilize quickness more than he's going to use power. Uh, but, I mean, if you look at his bench press numbers, you know, uh, as far as guys who did the bench press there at the Combine, uh, there are only five guys who were able to press more weight than Marcus Harris. Uh, even, you know, his own teammate there and Justin Rogers, who's a bigger guy, wasn't able to push as much weight as him. So I think that, you know, strength is not really going to be an issue for this young man when he gets to the next level. But I do agree that right now his projection is just a ro – well, just, I don't want to say just as if that's some terrible thing. But I do think that his projection is a rotational defensive tackle in the NFL. Um, and he – but that's going to be really good if he keeps working on his craft. And I think Marcus Marcus Harris got better every year um, at, at uh, the collegiate level. As he continues to work and he makes this his profession, I think that he'll be just fine. Um, let's flip it over here to Justin jo Justin Rogers. Uh, excuse me. Uh, he was six two and a half there, uh, three thirty on his weight, um, thirty three inch arms, and ten and one eighth inch uh, hand measurement there. And his prospect grade was a 5.96, which puts him in the range of what they would consider an average backup or special teamer. So, um, you know, when you're talking about dra uh, draft grades, you know, that's a that's a man, that's a late round guy who is kind of fighting to make a team kind of thing that they're expecting. So it's going to be interesting to see where he lands in the draft. Uh, Justin Rogers was a guy who I thought was going to come back for an additional year of collegiate football and kind of improve his draft stock by having another solid year. He was a very high prospect coming out of high school, and I don't think his collegiate career uh, kind of dipped down every year at Kentucky. Uh, and then when he came over to Auburn, I don't know that he had the productivity that people expected him to be able to have. Uh, so it hurt his prospects a little bit. Um, so it will be very interesting to see what happens with Justin Rogers in terms of where his draft stock goes after um, the combine. And then again, it's going to be interesting to see what happens at Pro Day. But let's get over to the guys, in my opinion, who have an opportunity to get into the upper three rounds, right? Uh, I, I don't think that the, the defensive lineman that we just talked about, Marcus Harris or Justin Rogers, will be in really have a chance to be the first three rounds. Um, and then, you know, again, from the profile of Justin Rogers, he'd be a guy who might not even get drafted. He might end up being, you know, somebody who gets uh, um, a free agent deal. But, you know, we'll see what happens again with his pro day and whether or not he can continue to raise his stock. But let's let's start with the, uh, the, the cornerbacks here. And I'll start with the guy who I think is 
going to have the lowest draft grade or a guy who is likely going to be um, the lowest on most people's boards, and that is Nehemiah Pritchett. But I think he helped himself out a lot with the time that he ran at the um, at the combine, right? He was the fourth fastest cornerback out there to put a time up. And listen, if you watch the fireside, you know Mighty knows he could he could he could slide out there, right? He understands he's he's able to pick him up and put him down. Everybody else on the team will tell you Mighty's fast. So four point three six is really moving out there. Six feet tall, one hundred and ninety pounds, thirty one uh, and five eighths. Uh, arm length and his hands are eight and three eighths according to the measurements there his prospect grade according to nfl.com is 6.16 which puts him at good backup to uh potentially develop into a starter i think that's a good place for him to come in and you know potentially get drafted mm, third maybe fourth round uh you know again i, I think the the speed is going to be attractive to people and then the fact that he played in the sec with that speed and he was able to start as many games as he was able to if it hadn't been for injury would have been much more in the previous in this past season um, but I think that speed and the number of games he was able to start on a consistent basis and the contributions that he had in uh, you know things like uh, special teams and that's going to allow him to get on somebody's team and go out there and make a difference uh, so I look forward to him potentially raising his draft stock even more at pro day uh, because I expect that some of these numbers are going to improve for him so I uh, you know, congrats to Mighty for going out there and handling business um, when it came to the combine. Next guy, I think, uh, is, you know, if I'm putting these in order from the highest rounds to the, the first pick, so uh, like going backwards, not necessarily who's going to be first off the draft board, but going from the last off the draft board to the first, I think the next one's going to be DJ James. Um, you know, and, and DJ went out here and again, a 4-4 is is really good for a guy who didn't really have an opportunity to show off that speed very much. I think he is one of the better cover corners. I think he's a very underrated cover corner. I've been saying this since preseason last year. I think he's underrated somehow as a cover corner. Um, he's the most versatile of them. Like Pritchett, is, I think, is more of a press man corner, and DJ can play a little bit of both. He does zone well. He does press man well. He's just a very a heady guy out there on the outside. Now, the NFL.com projects him as potentially moving into a nickel or slot position, which he's never really played in, in his career. So I think that's an interesting thing to see how that develops. Uh, but his score was a 6.3, uh, which says will eventually be a plus starter. So they're already saying that this is a guy who we think that once he gets in there and he learns a system, he's going to eventually be starting on someone's team. And I agree with that assessment of him. I think that he is definitely someone who can go and he can make a difference on somebody's squad as a backup corner to start. But once he gets that start, opportunity um, you know look out for that young man to go out there and impress and turn some heads uh, with his ability because again I think he's just one of the better cover corners that are coming that's coming out of um, that that's going into the draft this year now uh, NFL.com and I disagree on this next grade so they have DJ James as the highest graded one I think that uh, that Jalen Simpson probably is the best pro prospect of uh, this group. They have him measures at six feet, 179 pounds, 32 and three eighths arm length. Uh, hands were at nine and seven eighths inches, but they have him at 6.17. And uh, that means good backup to potential and potential to develop into a starter. And the reason why they list that in that way is they say that he's kind of a tweener, which I don't disagree with. He was a guy who played cornerback when he first started at Auburn, moved to safety, and when he was at safety, I think he found a home for himself. I think he projects better as a safety. Uh, but, you know, the, again, a 4-5 as a, uh, as, a, as a speed number doesn't jump off of the screen to you uh, the way like a 4-3 would, which I, I thought he was going to be much closer to a 4-3. Uh, but a 4-4-5 four, four, doesn't jump off of, up to you. And so maybe that doesn't... Um, impress you that much but then you look at the other things that he has as far as just his natural athletic ability when you look at you know what his vertical jump was it was broad jump I think that it allows him to be able to cover a lot of space in a short amount of time and then you go turn the tape on listen man just turn the tape on and watch him go make plays and and tell me that this isn't a guy that deserves to be a top three round draft pick um 
and I, I don't know that there are, you know, I have to go look at some of the other safeties that are on the board, and there's quite a few good defensive backs in general. Um, and him being a, a, a more versatile guy, I think it's going to be incumbent upon finding a team, too, that knows how to utilize unique skill sets and allows him to be, uh, you know, playing in a lot of different ways and, and systems that will allow their defensive backs to move around a bit. Um and if he finds the right home, right system, I think that he's going to be a valuable asset for somebody's team. I'm very high on Jalen Simpson as an NFL prospect, higher than what NFL.com clearly is on him. Uh, but pretty good showing, again, for all of the Auburn Tigers that went out there into the NFL Combine. But I want to hear what you guys think. Based upon what happened at the NFL Combine, who do you think will be the first person off the board for Auburn? That's the first question I want you guys to answer. And where do you think that they are going to be? And who do you think helped their draft stock the most? Who helped their draft stock the most at the Combine that just happened? But that's it. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you all for dropping in here with me this morning. As always, as always, the Morning Drop is brought to you by our show sponsor, who is Rogue Shop. Make sure you go ahead to over to RogueShop.com. Use code REPORT when you do. That gets you a little something off. America's number one online dispensary is the Rogue Shop. Sleep, stress, anxiety, pain relief. They got it for you right there at the Rogue Shop. Um, but we will be back at you all with another morning drop on tomorrow. Before you get out of here, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the content with somebody. Give us a five-star review over there on podcast. Until the next time, and as always, War Eagle.